In this video, I'm going to be explaining why adding a solute lowers the freezing point of a liquid. Now, I'm operating on the assumption that you've watched my previous video, adding a solute raises the boiling point of a liquid. Everything that I say in this current video is going to be based on the assumption that you have watched this video and you understand it. I'm going to be going through some concepts pretty quickly in this video because I'm assuming that you understand them from the previous. If you do not understand some of the concepts in this video, I encourage you to just go back and watch the previous one. So since we're talking in this video about the freezing point of a liquid, we're gonna be working in this area of the phase diagram where we have conversion back and forth between the solid state and the liquid state, which is what we define as freezing. And we're gonna be focusing on the pressures and temperatures that fall along this line, the line that exists between the solid state and the liquid state. Let's begin by identifying the standard freezing point for the substance that's being represented by this phase diagram. And as you know, the way that we will do that is to start over here on the pressure axis at one atmosphere pressure, and we will trace across to the solid liquid line. We refer to this as the solid liquid equilibrium line. This is the pressure temperature combination that corresponds to solid being converted into a liquid or vice versa, freezing. So once we've identified that point, we're gonna go down to the temperature axis right here, and the temperature that corresponds to this particular pressure is what we identify as the freezing point, the standard freezing point of this particular substance. So this is the freezing point of, we're gonna call this the solvent, just the pure liquid. And we're going to abbreviate that capital T for temperature, subscript F because it's freezing, and then that degrees symbol, this standard notation that's used to indicate that we're talking about the freezing point of a pure substance, not a, a solvent that's part of a solution. Now, if we add a solute to this particular liquid, it will act not only to drop the liquid gas equilibrium line, but it's also going to drop the equilibrium line in between the solid state and the liquid state as well. So this line, just like we saw with the boiling point scenario, this line is going to be shifted away from the liquid portion of the phase diagram. Let's draw that new solid liquid equilibrium line. Let's say that it shifts out to here. The extent to which this line shifts depends on what the solute is and also how concentrated the solution is. And let's go ahead and label this. This is the solid to liquid line and it drops or shifts due to the addition of a solute. So once we've added this solute and that solid liquid line has shifted, now we can understand how it has affected the freezing point of this particular substance. So we're going to um, retrace and find the new freezing point. We're going to go back to one atmosphere. We're going to trace along to our new solid liquid line. And then we're going to go down to the temperature axis to find the corresponding temperature. This temperature is the freezing point of this solution. And we're going to abbreviate it capital T subscript F. It does not get one of these standard symbols or degree symbol because this is not pure. This is a solution. The gap between the two temperatures, this distance right here, just like with boiling point, we refer to this as delta Tf. This is the change in the freezing point due to the addition of the solute. And then last but not least, we have an equation very similar to the one that we saw in the last video. The temperature change, delta Tf, can be calculated by taking a constant, Kf, and multiplying it by the concentration of the solution in units of molality. So that change in freezing point, which is represented by the difference in the freezing point between the freezing point of the solution and the freezing point of the pure sub, uh, solvent. Kf is a constant, and 
This is a constant that is specific to the solvent. So you need to look this up in a table. It varies based on your solvent. It is not the same as KB. It is a different number. And then that little m is molality, not molarity, molality of the solution.